you could always use two of our more heftier keychain lights, such as two Nikkor T4Ks, to create T4K nunchucks. Ow. Hello and welcome to another concept video breakdown from Nikkor Store. Today we will be discussing flashlights and their use in self-defense. Are you new to this channel? Consider subscribing and liking our videos for more Nightcore content. There are loads of far more qualified people on YouTube, like ex-Special Forces people, SWAT team people, cops, that have a vast amount of analytical, real-world application knowledge on this subject, and I would thoroughly recommend going to those people for a more practical outlook on ways of being able to defend yourself, or in, in a much more meaningful discussion. That being said, because flashlights are still part of my domain, I could at least, in a sort of sales mini way, provide the benefits and extol the virtues of what these little things can provide for the average individual. And thus, to quickly summarize, flashlights first and foremost provide illumination, which depending on how you use it, can be utilized in many meaningful different ways. And second, they act as a force multiplier, because I'm pretty sure anodized aluminum is less hurty than if you were to use your own bone. And a third reason it is often preferred is because of legality, requirement, and specifically because it's non-lethal, is what I'm trying to say. There are regions of the world where people do not have the access to the same tools that other regions of the world might have access to, and so this might be the best thing you could get. And finally, for a more detailed look into flashlights and self-defense, please refer to our blog at blog.nikerstore.com, where we have a detailed article extolling the virtues of flashlights and their potential uses in self-defense situations. And now first, the primary reasons as to why flashlights can be a useful self-defense tool is because they provide illumination. As I've discussed in a previous video, humans do not possess great scotopic visions, like cats or reptiles. The ability to use the little amount of light available in your environment to provide a high contrast or a high fidelity image, because biology. And thus, the ability to rapidly produce light, or at the very least, a large quantity of light as compared to 100 years ago, gives us the ability to identify threats, provide that sort of at least a psychological safety and security in dark areas, such as at nighttime or in old abandoned warehouses, haunted mansions. Right now, animal costumed themed amusement parks is very popular. Dark place where people are easily frightened. And, hmm, I suppose sewers, creepy Japanese villages, and woods. Yes. Thus, the ability to produce a large amount of light, oof, <clears throat> at the very least, provides that sort of sense of safety and security, helps you quickly identify the threat so that you can turn around and run away, or brandish a more meaningful weapon. Specifically, when it comes to humanoid assailants, you have to remember that your weaknesses are their weaknesses as well. And remember, I said that us humans do not possess great scotopic vision. That goes the same for your assailant as well, and thus the ability to produce high-powered light, especially in a flashlight such as our i-series, like the P20i, P10i, 20iX, 10iX, 20iUV, with their built-in strobe pedal, at night, especially when the eyes have already adjusted and the pupils have been uh, opened to their maximum diameter to allow in what very little light there is to get suddenly hit by this. Ha! Huh. Causes. Oh no, I just see the little. Oh, there he goes. Causes what's called flash blindness, which I believe is a colloquial term. I don't think it's a real medical thing. Even so, that sudden bright light entering the pupil at maximum dilation can cause disorient- like, I'm disoriented right now, yes. Um, in a, even though I already had the studio lights, which are very bright, on me right now, so my pupils probably weren't even that dilated, this, for just a few seconds, huh, is very disorienting. I can barely formulate my sentences at this moment, although that is just because I'm kind of dumb. The, especially when you have a flashlight, such as our i-series, with a rapid strobe pedal that you can easily access. You don't really even have to think about it. You just know you don't have to mess with any of the modes. You can just quickly 
boom, gives you that half a second to disorient your assailant and then possibly run away, find authorities, get help, or find like a bludgeon of sorts, like a stick. I thought I would take the time to do some research to provide possibly non-specific or less likely but still meaningful scenarios for our viewing pleasure. Coyotes. According to a study done in Kansas which involved over a hundred different sheep farms, 79 sheep were killed by coyotes, but only three sheep were killed by coyotes on farms which had motion-activated lights. Now obviously those lights weren't, you know, high-powered flashlight, high-powered flashlights, or with high lumens. They were actually the mercury vapor lights, so old-school sort of big flood lamps. That being said, I assume that the study is trying to draw the delineation that when it comes to the presence versus the absence of light, the presence of light itself was enough of a deterrent to dissuade the coyotes from attacking the sheep, at least more so than the unlit or poorly lit farms. Now, as a layman, that has no idea whatsoever when it comes to animal husbandry or ranching, farming, I cannot help but think that there is a possibility that there were other variables at play. Either way, this data seems fairly believable and at least easily intuitively interpreted because nocturnal predators such as the coyote could, you, I can surmise they'd be easily spooked by a sudden bright source of light, especially because they are, they're not massive predators that overpower their prey, they tend to sneak up. Thus, if you are ever hiking or on a trail or perhaps walking through the woods, perhaps over a river to go to grandmother's house, then I would suggest one could use a possibly bright flashlight to keep coyotes at bay. You know, just strobe them and walk away. Well, no, don't just like strobe any animal. That just seems unnecessarily mean for no reason. Only if I suppose they are behaving aggressively. So then, let's go to Africa. Hippos, of course, are the most dangerous animals in terms of sheer body count when it comes to human fatalities. A rather unintuitive statistic because one would surmise it would be a crocodile or perhaps a lion because those are apex predators and humans tend to symbolically associate them with fear or death. But yes, it is in fact the hippo, with an estimated roughly 500 people losing their lives every year to hippopotamus attacks. A factoid that was popularized, I want to say, around the early 2010s was when this started getting shared around a lot. Usually by rather dull or uninteresting people, the kind that would like to aggressively share these sort of morsels or factoids with a rather uncomfortable manic energy, usually around the water cooler or at dinner parties, in an effort to maintain the delusion that they are far more interesting than they actually are. I believe we've referred to these people as Redditors now. I don't know what that means. After scouring the internet for about 10 minutes, researching whether or not a flashlight would have any effect on a hippo, I found three scholarly articles which don't explicitly state that hippopotamuses are hippopotami, hippopotamuses are photosensitive or particularly photosensitive. However, the general consensus is that regardless you, if, even if you think you have a meaningful defense mechanism for, or ag I suppose against the hippopotamus, it's still better to just run away because they are far more powerful than you would like to, if, well, no. I've never, I don't think I could go so far as to say anybody would underestimate the capability of a 2,000 pound animal with giant teeth. Yeah, I don't think many people would underestimate it. But either way, the best tool is to still run away, even if you think you have a meaningful object to defend yourself with. So I cannot in good conscience tell you that a flashlight would be potentially useful in a hippo attack. However, many of Nikkor's flashlights come with a SOS or beacon function. Thus, post-vicious mauling, if you are still clinging to your trusty flashlight as the rest of your body lies in a mangled heap, you can use what remaining dexterity you have left, which isn't a lot because it's very so you can activate the SOS or beacon oh, yeah. so that you can get aids, so that you can get aid, so that assistance can, so that you can notify an assistance can arrive. So then what about North America? Well, according to the number of human fatalities, injuries, and illnesses in the United States due to wildlife, rather morbid document provided in the human wildlife interactions, huge, large PDF. I suppose this was like a government sanctioned study of sorts, the number one animal to take human lives in North America is actually the deer. Yes, just common deer. And I don't want to create the illusion that deer are secretly fearsome creatures. No, it's it's almost all due to vehicle collisions, which is still deeply unfortunate that so many people have to lose their lives to 
skittish deer jumping out onto the side of the road. However, the last time this document was published, 58,622 people were sick or got injured due to deer vehicle related collisions and of them 440 people died. What I find rather disconcerting about this table is the fact that they show 0.8 people being sick or injured by grizzly bears and then a question mark for the amount of fatalities. I don't know why they left that. However, one place potentially where I could find a meaningful connection with flashlights and that data is specifically should you ever be injured in a vehicle related accident, collision with a deer, and you are the owner of a P20i or perhaps a P20iX, any of our 34 millimeter bezel series lights with these built in glass breakers, silicone nitrided uh, stainless steel inlays, and the door is jammed, perhaps the collision caused some sort of malfunction, then, I mean, I've demonstrated in the past how easily this can be used as one of those sort of safety tools that can easily smash or break the window so you can exit the vehicle should the vehicle, you know, be in a possibly precarious situation. That's, I don't know how realistic that is. That's very Hollywood. Like you get into a collision and like slowly the smoke and fire increases in t intensity and you just intuitively know it's about to blow up. I don't know how often that actually happens. However, it is still good in that sense that you have a very reliable glass breaker on hand. And then afterwards, use the SOS or stroke function to signal for help should for whatever reason your phone also be damaged from the collision. Stupid deer. Next would be bear attacks. So how could you use a flashlight if should you ever be assailed by a bear? That's a good question. Might I suggest a 10 millimeter or perhaps like at least a 357 Magnum? I don't know what the general consensus right now on the internet is for the adequate caliber size for bears. Also, bears are very matriarchal, so should you ever be ass assailed by two bears at once, you could always tell the first bear that the bear number two talked smack about his mother, and that might pit them against each other, giving you time to run away with your picnic basket. Just, just stay out of the woods. And finally, I did research on reptiles, specifically snakes, because that's another potential thing where you might be hiking and if you're not paying attention, there might be a snake in your path and although you didn't really intend to um, tread on it in every sense of the phrase, it might lash out at you or try to defend its territory, perceive you as a potential assailant. There is no collective or any generally agreed upon consensus when it comes to snakes and photosensitivity. A lot of diversity in the species of snakes. So that being said, there were a couple of stories posted by different people with encounters with snakes and actually quite a lot of them said that they don't really respond at all. There were a few posts on candle power forums which said that you shine a light on a snake, they won't even really react. They'll just kind of stay there. They only really react if you get too close to them. So yeah, unfortunately, flashlights do not work on snakes. At least I cannot say with full confidence that they do. However, that being said, should you ever be bitten by one, same rules apply. You have a handy signaling device with strobe and SOS to alert potential uh, assistance. That concludes Nikor Store's concept video breakdown of flashlights and their potential roles in self-defense. For a more in-depth and meaningful discussion, for example based on models and their specific uses, please refer to our self-defense with flashlights blog post at blog.nikorstore.com. You can find the link in the description below. And as always, as a show of appreciation for our YouTube audience, save 10% on your entire order at Nikor Store when you use the code U10 at checkout. If you have enjoyed this video, or think I'm a big dumb fart, please leave a comment or suggestion below. To stay up to date on future product releases, sales announcements, and all things flashlight related, please consider subscribing to the Nikor Store YouTube channel. And thank you.